right. So we're going to talk today about why you might have or might not have sucked at 17.3. We're joined again with Keith Van Wickler. Living and this three time, stripe life. the three stripe the life. Thursday. And this time, Dr. Jeremy <laughs> has also graced us with his presence. So for 17.1 and 17.2, we talked about different planes of movement, working unilaterally and working under duress. Um, in 17.3, we have a little bit of a different take. Um, I'm going to let Jeremy kind of start you guys off with why maybe 17.3 sucked for you because orthopedically you weren't ready for it. So why don't you go ahead right. and kind of give an example, talk about what we mean by that. Yeah. So really when we look at this, this test of fitness, right? Um, the, a major limiting factor is your range of motion, right? You need to not only get into an overhead squat, you need to fling a barbell up in the air and then catch it in an overhead squat as described by the rules or in the, uh, in the scale division, you, you still have to get down to it. You can power. Right? It's just a throw and a catch. Yeah, it's throw and a catch. Okay. Simple. Okay. Simple. Right, got it. Right? I'm just making sure I didn't miss something. Right. Okay. But um, so, yeah, so maybe some people didn't perform the way they wanted to as far as their score um, because, you know, they, they weren't squat snatching. They've only been power snatching and they're just, they were inefficient at their squat snatch. Other people um, really just can't overhead squat and therefore can't squat snatch. And what I mean by that can't is orthopedically, they're just not able to do it. They're, they're missing the prerequisite ranges of motion, might even have some joint degeneration as to why they can't get down there. Um, one, one specific story that, 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 we, that we had here was a um, you know, woman in her 50s, lost a ton of weight doing CrossFit, not the most mobile person in the world. Um, she's in the open. She did the scaled version. Um, she really doesn't have a lot of business doing an overhead squat. Right, um, but she did it right, and she was pumped. She's like, "I've never done an overhead squat. I did 33 of them. It was amazing." She threw some expletives in there. It was awesome. So something to, to note, though, I don't mean to, I do no, need to cut you yeah, off. No. But and Keith can attest to this too: is that she doesn't overhead squat in class. She doesn't right. squat snatch in class right. for the specific purpose that we anticipate potential injury if she did. Right. And she's gone years. Yeah. Without any exacerbation of her low back condition. Right. Yeah. Carry she, on. She, well, she actually said, so yesterday she was in the office, she said, you know, when I was very overweight, this used to happen to me all the time. It would happen two times a year. I'd be laid up for a week. Since I've, you know, started CrossFit, I haven't had this. It hasn't been here. I've lost 50 pounds. I haven't had low back pain. Um, and it's because of the modifications that she's been doing in here that she's been able to, you know, be consistent with her working out, push herself by doing the right things. Um, so now she gets in and out of an overhead squat 33 times, uh, goes to work on Sunday, sits at her job on Monday and is absolutely crippled. So she came in Monday with intense hip pain, throbbing hip pain in her anterior hip and posterior hip um, from dropping into a, an overhead squat when she really shouldn't be. Um, and then walking around on it or sitting on it all day Monday and Tuesday she now has an acute disc and she's out of work for the next three days. So that's just an example as to why it wasn't necessarily the, the right workout for her. And, and I think that Keith can speak to this more, right? right. But the, the idea for what we look to do in the gym setting is if orthopedically it doesn't make sense for you to do and it's not going to be beneficial for you to do, right. there's no reason for us to do it. Yep. So Keith, can you talk kind of about what a day in the gym would look like for this athlete who you know we're talking about so that someone who's listening who's like, yeah, you know what, that's me too, what that looks like and how it's beneficial as opposed to just slamming into the bottom and dealing with this pain. Because yeah. people, pe people will say she should be able to do that. So if she's with you guys especially, why can't she still? Right, and, and the old thing is everybody should squat because it's a natural range of motion, it's a natural thing, but you know, in a perfect world, yes. But in this case, we've identified the issues that she has that says, especially in an overhead squat position, it's not the best thing for her. And you look at a risk reward for her, for where she is in her life and, and her intention and her goal of coming here is to get fitter and feel healthy and feel better. And if going into an overhead squat and full snatching is actually going to do the opposite. It's going to cause her pain, uh, cause her joint problems. And like Jeremy said, she'll be so injured that she can't train and now she's actually getting less healthy and in worse shape, then what's the sense of forcing her to do that? Um, so we've done the assessments. She's been through all of the movement assessments, uh, a lot of the strength balancing assessments. Um, and we've watched her move and we say, you know what? This isn't a good idea for you. When we snatch, 
you're going to power snatch. And, and honestly, most of the time, it's more of a muscle snatch because she has no problem pulling. Um, if she's not dropping down, she can hold a bar overhead. Um, so that's what she does. You know what I mean? And in other cases, we might say, listen, you're just not snatching because what benefit are you going to get out of doing that movement? Not much. We can give you a kettlebell swing. We can give you a clean. We can come up with some kind of other hinge movement or some other ground to shoulder movement that's going to give you the same benefit from a fitness perspective, um, but keep you in a much better position orthopedically and, and a better position for longevity. I was going to ask that exact question. Have you, have you seen her do cleans in class setting before? Yes. So would you say it would be a reasonable recommendation for somebody who cannot squat snatch? where you want to elicit the sensation, the stimulus that comes from squatting mm -hmm. and ground to overhead coupled to say, okay, everybody else is squat snatching. We don't want you to power snatch today because it's not about power positioning. We want you to squat clean. Right, so we have people all the time who will come in with a shoulder issue uh, and we're doing snatches and they say, what should I do? Well, you know, are you okay to clean? Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, and you know, from a competitive perspective in the CrossFit world, it's saying, well, the snatch and the clean are so different, but really when you look at it from a movement perspective, like you said, it is a ground to shoulder, and if you want to add a squat variation in there, as long as they're able to squat, then great. They're essentially getting what they need out of that, uh, and they're going to be much better off in the long run because they're not putting themselves in a position that they shouldn't be in. Right, and someone like this athlete, when you change the center of gravity of the barbell, she's able to squat. So that's kind of what we're right. talking about is overhead squats require a lot of stability from other places and a lot of flexibility and mobility from other places to accomplish fully, where a front squat requires a little bit less from those same places. So right. for someone like her, if this was squat clean, she's probably not laid up mm -hmm. from work the next day because yeah. she's done those. Um, or if her son didn't steal her Olympic lifting shoes. Right. Cost her about an inch <laughs> range of motion. There. But seriously, that that changes the positioning, that changes her hip position at the bottom of that squat. Potentially, that that could have given her a little bit more a little space. Bit. Over 33 reps, that that starts to yeah, add up. It starts to accrue. So uh, it was just kind of no, it's true. It and was a funny backstory. <laughs> here, here's I think the big take home for this is something that you know our friend Tyler McBride from CrossFit 516 has said over and over again. It's trust the process, chase the stimulus. Right, right. you're you're not here because you're gonna finish in 504th in your region in your age group in the open as opposed to 520th or 1,000th, it doesn't matter. So orthopedically, if you're not prepared to do a workout, you're gonna suck at it and guess what? It's gonna affect your next workout too because you, you're gonna be hurt. Right. Yeah, she's, she's out of work for three days. She's not gonna be doing too much in the gym for the next seven to 10 days. Mm -hmm. And that's not the goal. Right. And this is something that, you know, maybe we should you know, do a different video, but something that you put very well yesterday um, that we talk about, you know, often enough, but, you know, how there's now these, you know, at the beginning, right, the sport of CrossFit and CrossFit were very similar things, you know, you know, five, seven years ago. Um, but now we're starting to see the gap between the everyday CrossFitter and the elite CrossFitter just, you know, infinitely. It's spreading apart. So what's what's tough now is you have you ask Dave Castro, what's the point of the open, right? The point of the open is to find the fittest person on earth, on earth right? It's the first part of it. I, ha um, I haven't asked him recently. You haven't asked him. I would assume. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm assuming things. Um, but but if you ask Nicole Carroll, you say, well, no, the open is all inclusive. Um, well, in this case, I don't think it was. Uh, I think asking people. You know, to, to perform a squat snatch because either way you had to you had to get into that overhead squat position is not the right thing to do in in the overall CrossFit community with a clock on when people are trying to to perform. Um, if it was a power snatch, I think it's a different story. It's a less extreme range of motion. You're not going to run into the same orthopedic issues because yeah, you can run into orthopedic issues everywhere. But this case, this is really the highest level movement, the, the greatest range of motion, you know, losing connection with the ground, having to spontaneously reconnect, uh, reconnect with the ground and create stability. That it, This was, to me, an orthopedic nightmare and, and a real step back. I was really happy last year when they, so the two years before, they had the overhead squat workouts, and that was, it was great for me because I have good mobility. Like, I could beat people who I thought were fitter than me cardiovascularly, strength-wise, in that workout because it was relatively easy for me to get in and out of that. Yep. Last year, they said, okay, we're going to do an overhead walking lunge, which I was like, orthopedic perspective, great. You're still challenging that overhead stability, that overhead stamina. You're still challenging leg strength, but you're taking some of that mobility and those orthopedic concerns out of it. Um, but this year was just a more than a step back because the only thing worse than an overhead squat is catching the weight in an overhead squat. <laughs> and if right? you look at it from that member's perspective, right, um, you know, 
the Open's all inclusive, and it's a great thing for the community, and it's, it's exciting, and gyms do a great job of building it up and, and saying, yeah, you should do the Open. Oh, but I can't do this. I can't. Ah, everyone should do the Open. You should do it. Right. So that member of that athlete is like, okay, I'm going to do it. Awesome. My coach told me to. All my friends are doing it. I don't want to let the community down. It's, it's full snatches. I really am not supposed to overhead squat, but it's the open and I'm fired up and everybody's doing it and I want to be part of it and everybody's cheering them on. They're going to force themselves to do that. Right. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very difficult to maintain that mindset of, you know what, I shouldn't do this when you have all that other stuff going on. So, right. it, so it's definitely a conflict, like you're saying. Um, where do you decide, okay, you know, this is a bad idea um, and this part of the open is for right. those people and this is what you should do differently. Right. Well, and I'm, I'm going to cut you off real Go quick because personal experience with me on this workout, right? I'm warming up. I, you know, about two weeks ago, I started feeling this, you know, thing in my hip at the bottom of my squat. You know, I'm like, ah, it's probably just a little something will go away. Been ignoring it, and now, you know, now it's now this workout comes out, and I'm getting warm, and I'm doing my overhead, squat, I'm doing snatches, and I'm like, this just isn't feeling right, right? But I'm, but I'm in that now. I'm caught in that, that position where it's like, okay, I'm on a team, you know. Well, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm involved in CrossFit, you know, but it's like right now, like, am I going to get hurt from this? No, I'm not going to be require surgery, but am I going to now compromise my training for the next week? Am I going to be feeling hip pain? Am I going to be, you know, maybe not so in inclined to play with my kids on the ground now doing this workout? Yeah. Should I do it prescribed? No, but my ego just had to do it or the peer pressure. I don't know what it was, but it was just like, no, like it's the open. I have to do it. It's the spirit right? of so the open. It's the spirit Very of the powerful. open, right? I, I heard, Did I get that award last week? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I heard, some, I heard someone tell you, you don't need to do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> so somebody told me not to do this, but it's, it's, but again, it's that, it's that situation. And you know, for me, like I can, I, I, I understood everything. I made a decision. Yes. Okay. I don't think it's going to be that bad. You know, I got to try and be cleary somehow. Um, didn't happen, but it, it, but it, but I, I felt it, and it was very real. And, and even really understanding these things, where the you know the, maybe the general gym goer doesn't, um, that's a really sticky situation. Yeah. Well, so so I think that the take home point to give people a message to bring this home with is, right. yeah, sure, go ahead, sign up for the open, right. do the open. At the end of the day, be responsible. Right. Right. If, if if orthopedically a workout doesn't give you an opportunity to be successful, mm -hmm. to be safe, and to enjoy yourself right. the day after. Right. You don't have to do that workout. You can find out where you fit on the leaderboard in 17.1, 2, 4, and 5 without having done 17.3 right. or 0. 0.4 or 0. 0.5, whichever one it might be. But I'm in the open. That's a you problem. That is a me problem. Until next time, guys, <laughs> why you sucked or didn't suck in the open, 17.3 edition. We'll see you next week with 17.4.